Hey, what's up guys? I'm Stephen Mayu, and in this video series, I'm doing the React Challenges at FreeCodeCamp.com. In this first challenge, we're doing the Markdown Previewer, and we're almost done. Let me show you what we have right now. So we have our React application all set up. We have our uh, component. And uh, if I type in the text box, I am successfully updating the state of this component. And uh, it's displaying right here under the preview. But that's not exactly what we want, do we? Um, for example, I know in GitHub Livered Markdown that I can type a hash with some text. And that should make it into a header. Uh, but we're not getting that. Uh, we're just getting like the literal, you know, string value that we're passing it in. It's not compiling it uh, or transpiling it into HTML. So let's fix that, fix that up and, uh, and wrap up this project right now. So in order to do this, okay, uh, remember in the first or second video, we were setting up our JavaScript files and that third library that we marked in, the one that was uh, suggested to us by FreeCodeCamp, it's that marked library. And um, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty good. And uh, they give you a lot of like options and things like that. For us, um, we don't need to you know, worry too much about those options. All we have to do to convert some GitHub flavored markdown to HTML, you know what we got to do? We just got to wrap a string in this method called marked. So I'm going to write this line here, event.target.value. I'll put some parentheses around that. Okay, that should be good to go. Let me look at the preview now. And let's see what happens when I type... Uh, oh, goodness. Ah, I know what happened. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't put it right there. It should be down here. <laughs> I know, right? Marked. And, all right. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that's going to be so much better. That was kind of an unintended consequence. That was kind of cool, though. All right. So now I'm going to do this. And look at that. I got a P tag. Hello. And I get some HTML generated. That's pretty sweet. So by typing hash in the string hello, I get a h1 tag, and I get an id too, and uh, I get hello, and that's pretty sweet. Let's do some more. I can write this. Hey! And there we go, some more. Got a, another h3, so that's pretty darn cool. But I don't want the, you know, html here. That's, that's kind of dumb. Uh, so <laughs> I, I actually just wanted to, you know, take the HTML and like make it look like, you know, formatted text. So how do you do that? How do you, um, how do you take some, uh, yeah, HTML and uh, you know, just display it on the page? Because right now we're getting like a string representation of this. Okay, a string representation. So the markdown that's in our state object. We're passing it through this uh, marked method right here, and it's just giving us straight HTML. Totally fine, but we need to um, we need to do one little thing. It's not very common re in React, and I don't suggest that you do it very often. But let's take care of that right now. Okay, we're going to create a div. Okay, and just give it a closing tag right here. And inside that div, I'm going to give it a special React JSX property. Uh, I think it's hilariously named. Uh, it is called dangerously set inner HTML, and I believe that it is all um, it is all. Um, yeah, like camel case right here. So dangerously, and then set with a capital S, enter with a capital I, and then HTML all caps right there. And this takes an object. Okay, and this is going to be a little funky. Just bear with me. And we're going to need one key, one property, underscore, underscore, HTML with a colon. And then we will bring in our marked library. And then this dot state dot markdown. Okay. And all right, that looks good. Let's give it a shot. All right. So we got here. 
Uh-oh, something's not working here. Let me do some quick uh, research. Let's see. Uh, dangerously set inner... Oops, have an extra T in there. That shouldn't be there. All right, let's try this again. Hello. All right, sweet. It works. And we could try this. How are you? We could do links. This is my web page. And like we can go like this. Uh -huh. uh, Google.com, whatever. And it's a it's a web page. So pretty darn cool. It works now. Awesome. Let's discuss one more time what's happening here. Okay, in our React application. All right, we're going to go start to finish. So CSS, not important. I just wanted some, uh, you know, a little bit of margin. And to satisfy this rule, you have to use both SAS and React. So, okay, I used SAS a little bit, so that works. Uh, HTML, very bare bones, too. Uh, we got this class right here called render uh, target. And this is where all of my um, JSX gets injected right now, okay? And... This is my JavaScript, not too bad, only 29 lines. And uh, we set it up using a class-based component. And I want to use state for this component. State is like a global object, or no, 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 it's not a global object, but it is an object uh, that's available to this component only. Um, and in order to set that up, we need to use the constructor method, call super, and then we set the initial values. But after setting the initial values, we can't really do the syntax anymore. We have to use this dot set state, and then we can update the value of our component state object. In a class-based component, you need a render method that returns some JSX. So in the first part of the screen, we have the markdown area. And in our text area, we have, um, we have uh, I gave it like 10 rows to you know, make it deep. And I styled it with a little bit of inline CSS. Um, the value of the text area will always be whatever is currently stored in our state uh, dot markdown object. So uh, this is going to be a string, and, uh, and it's just always going to reflect whatever is in the state at that given point. But anytime we change uh, our text area and type, what it will do is uh, take the event argument right here, and then it will update the markdown uh, property on our state object with the, uh, with the value of whatever we typed in. Uh, by the way, we can call this helper method one way using a fat arrow function, as I've done down here. Or we can do a little bit of JavaScript magic, and we can type this. We can type this dot handle change dot bind parentheses this. And that looks super, super funky, but same thing. Works uh, just as fine. Uh, maybe in, a, in another project, I'll go over the differences between that. But uh, you can do it either way uh, with, the, uh, with the bind uh, or with the fat arrow function. And then right here, okay, um, so I, I am wrapping my state object now in the marked library. And remember, marked, it takes, um, it takes like GitHub flavored markdown and it like generates it into HTML. So, whoops. So this right here is just returning a string. So this is our string of our raw markdown. We wrap it in the marked library, and that returns some HTML to us. Uh, unfortunately, if I just you know got rid of all this dangerously set inner HTML and stuff like that, uh, then it's just gonna like literally print the HTML. But in order for it to like display as we expect it to, then I create this div. I've given it a property of dangerously set inner HTML, and uh, I gave it a, another object. Uh, it has a property of underscore underscore HTML, and then I passed in uh, that parsed markdown. Uh, uh, and yeah, that's basically it. So uh, I know this was like a lot of steps and uh, and a lot of uh, you know uh, videos. Just 
with one fairly straightforward project. Um, in the future, we're going to use you know, a lot of boilers, like just to get up and running fast. The, the next project, I definitely need to work with more than one component. Um, so uh, I'm probably going to develop it in an external uh, text editor. Uh, right now, I, I just created one component, which seems to work. Uh, but other people, you know, they, they might have done it differently. Like, for example, one, uh, some people, they may make this, like the markdown area, like one component, and the preview uh, to another component, um, and, uh, and then, you know, just inject both of them into the app component, which gets you know, uh, inject it into our uh, web page. Uh, that would have been one way to go about it. Um, that That's certainly more complex. So for something simple like this, uh, I think one component is fine. But in the subsequent challenges, we definitely need many components. Uh, I, I, I couldn't, yeah, uh, I don't want to think about making that into one component. That would be really, really tough to do that. But anyway, uh, we're finished with this project. Congratulations. Um, go ahead, try to, you know, recreate these steps yourself. You know, walk it through line by line. Try to understand what's happening. And seriously, if you have any questions, um, uh, you know, comments or suggestions for improvement, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, you can also go to my GitHub uh, page. I'm at GitHub slash Stephen Mayu. And, uh, and right here, uh, this is probably the best way to get in touch with me. You can, uh, you can go to my uh, personal website or send me an email, uh, anything like that. That would be uh, super cool. Okay, thank you so much for watching my videos. I love making them. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to doing the next React project with you, uh, which, by the way, uh, let's just uh, have a sneak peek. What is that one going to be? Do, 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 do. It is going to be... Ooh, build a camp leaderboard. So that's going to be really fun making that one. All right, until the next time, uh, I will see you later. Okay, guys, bye-bye, bye, bye, boop.